All right, so first things first, we're going to try to find a sample that is going to guide this whole song, and we're going to build a song around that sample. So I'm going to go ahead and look through some of these kits that I have, and let's hopefully find something that's going to work. All right, maybe here. We need to find something dark. I kind of have an idea for this. Let's see. Let's look around a little bit more. I'll remember to come back to this. I think I found a sample that works. Let's go ahead and take this right here and drag it to an audio track. Let's unwarp it, rewarp it, and let me go ahead and find a nice loop point. control and go ahead and drag I think right here is a good end point for the loop a little bit early let's go ahead and extend this all right I think that's good let's get straight into it and let's get a nice hard bass sound and the bass is just gonna guide this whole song forward um, and that's gonna lead us into our drums and all of that so I already know I want to use the Bank 808 from the 808 Essentials kit. Um, it just sounds like something from the style that I'm going for right now. Let's find a good note. Let me hold shift and press up. Let's make a melody up here. And let's get very creative with this melody. One, two, three, four, five. into a single clip with command J or control J let me select everything and hit shift and press down two times three 
The sample is everything, man. This is crazy. I like this a lot. Let's cut out the lows. I think there's not really much lows anyways. This is not a very creative bass line, but um, we're going to add some more notes in a bit. lower this sample a little bit and in my drum rack I already have a kick right here uh, it's from my trap essentials kit it's kick number 85 <clears throat> so let's go ahead and create two clips here or just one and then we'll have a different one like right here but let's focus on this right now Let's turn off the 808 just so we can focus on making a good pattern right now. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this right here. And now we're going to start um aligning our 808 to the actual uh, bass notes, I mean to the kicks. So let's put another one right here. Now what I noticed is that when the velocity was a little bit higher, it actually um, change the volume so let's turn off this velocity to volume right here and let's turn up the overall volume a little bit so that the velocity doesn't affect how loud our um, 808 is so right here let's have a bunch of 808s like right here Boom, boom, boom. Now let's add a clap to this. So we have this drum rack over here. Let's go ahead and add a clap. I'm just going to go straight to the Trap Essentials kit, go to the plug kit, get this clap right here. It's fine.
So next, I want to add like a rim sound, and that's gonna kind of be like a percussion element of these drums. So let's go ahead and go to field recordings and get like some sort of realistic like field recording some sort of hit sound let me look at some of these packs i'm trying to find out which one i want to use right now all right this one let's get a nice hit perfect so let's go ahead and drag that down here and let me turn this to classic mode and we're gonna turn the sustain to negative infinity which is complete silence um, the decay is how long it takes for the sound to go to complete silence now if we hadn't turned on the sustain the sound would sound like this if we turn it down it sounds like this it's a lot cleaner because we're getting rid of that long reverb that tail and the sample does everything that's crazy um, let's get a nice hi-hat sound go back to the trap essentials kit my go-to here let me go with a six kit snare I mean not a snare a hi-hat Ooh, an open hi-hat I like that I'll use that I was really going for a closed hi-hat though but I guess I'll take that. Now let's get another track. Let's just duplicate this track and put a closed hi hat. All right, let's start with the open hi hat. All right, that's cool. Let's go ahead and record something. Go ahead and quantize this and align everything to the grid real quick. All right, that's cool. We're going to go so wild with these hi-hats. Let's cut out the hi-hats. It's going to be like, and it's going to stop, and then it's going to get back into it, and it's going to keep going. I like that. You got to play with the rhythm. Crazy with this man. Let's add a triplet uh, roll. So we're gonna right click and go into the triplet grid, or you can hit Command three or, or Control three. It all does the same thing. And let's go ahead and hit Control two to make the grid a little bit larger. And let's get a triplet roll somewhere. Actually, that's too slow. Let's hit Command-1 to make it a little bit smaller. Let's try this. And then let's 
go back to a regular grid by hitting command 3 again <laughs> Let's try different hi hats. Now, what I want to do is create like a chord progression to go over this. Um, this sample, we're gonna kind of recreate the chord progression in a way. So let's get um, Serum. I came out with uh, Lush Volume 2, which is a preset pack for Serum. I'm gonna use the Aftershock pad. I feel like it was, it would sound good. That's hard. Now let's go ahead and be a little bit more creative with this 808 bass line. What I'm gonna do with this 808 is I'm going to, first of all, let me hide my face. I'm gonna change this to one voice from six voices. That way it can only play one single note at a time and it won't overlap the notes. And I'm gonna go and right click this and change this to a sampler from a simpler. This is just so I have more options. The sampler has more complicated um, layouts and has like way more options and stuff. So the main reason is that I want to turn the pitch bend range from five to 24. That way we have a large pit, uh, pitch bend kind of area, I guess. Not area, but we have a lot of pitch bending capabilities now. Let's go ahead and go to this automation mode right here. And now we can start automating our 808. Especially right here, I wanna have a pitch bend. Listen to that, that's crazy. Can do the reverse and kinda of have an upwards pitch bend as well. But it kind of works better if the note is a little bit higher. So if you want to start editing notes again, you hit this arrow right here. Let's go ahead and take this note up a little bit. Mm. That hits so hard. All right, let's go back to this pitch bin. <clears throat> That's crazy, man. And I always love doing these like crazy downwards ones. That note is too high to do that, so I'm not going to mess with it. Mm -mm. <laughs> Wrong note.
listen to that. That's crazy, man. I'm just gonna keep it at the end. We don't have to be too crazy with this. We don't have to abuse this um, ability to do that. Let's start arranging this beat because it sounds almost like we need to start moving forward. So what I just did is I selected one uh, clip, like the length of the area I want to duplicate, and then I hit Command Shift and then D, and that'll just duplicate everything over to the right, and it'll shift things over. Let's get rid of these hi hats right here, and let's go back to a simple 808 pattern. Get rid of this kick. And these types of beats are pretty simple. You don't really have to get too groovy and wavy with it and add a bunch of extra stuff. So what I want to do actually is reverse this order. Let's get rid of the sample right here. Now as you can tell with these 808s, they're super long. Uh, the ones from the 808 Essentials Kit, this bank 808 included has a very long tail and stuff. Um, if I showed in the browser, all of these 808s have super long tails. And they're WAV files, so they work for any, uh, I was going to say browser, they work for any digital audio workstation. So FL Studio, Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, everything that can use WAV files can use these um, 808s. That's why they don't run out when we're playing these really long notes. Now what I want to do is add a crash. So let's go to the Trap Essentials kit. And let me get one of my favorite crashes. The number six right here. And let me unwarp it. And let's get rid of this open hi-hat. This perk is super loud. And what I want to do is real quick, um, let's get this last section right here of this sample. Let's copy it. Let's turn off the EQ and let's paste it right here. And what I'm going to do is get a pitch bend, uh, I mean a pitch stop effect or a tape stop effect um, from Max for Live. It's called pitch drop. And I'm going to go ahead and reverse this real quick. And then I'm going to activate the pitch drop. Let me put it on soft mode. Let's go ahead and go to automation right here and turn it on. Let's make this a little bit longer. Perfect. Now let's create another audio track by right clicking and hitting insert audio track. Let's get out of this automation mode right here. Freeze this track. Let's go ahead and drag this to the new track. So now we have this reverse piece of audio and what happens when you freeze a track is that whatever you've done with all the effects and stuff becomes into a single audio file. And what we're going to do is we're going to reverse it right here. fire and we're gonna get our fades real quick so now we have like 
this effect that was kind of reversed and now we're gonna re-reverse it and make it come upwards. And it kind of leads into that drop. Maybe we shouldn't have reversed it when it was up on this track. Let's unreverse it. Now let's freeze it. All right, the automation's on, so that's good. And now let's drag this. Let's try this real quick. Unfreeze. And let's reverse this. There we go. Anyways, this was pretty simple so far. Let's go ahead and start actually creating like a melody of some sort. There's already a melody on this sample, but I want to get like a bell sound from Omnisphere and like try to add some sort of ambient sound to this. Let's go ahead and hit this folder right here. And uh, okay, this is the multi browser. We need to go down here. Let's hit bells and chimes and actually bells and vibes and hit shuffle. Now we can try some different sounds out randomly. Mm. What notes am I supposed to be using right now? this as like a, a trap bell so right here we're just gonna record something all right that's the wrong octave let me try that again what? I'm confused all right there we go <clears throat> Hopefully that'll work. One more thing missing. One more thing, one more instrument. Something's just missing. Actually, you know what? I have an idea. Let's, let's duplicate this track right here. Take these sample clips right here and drag them to the front. We don't need this pitch drop anymore. We don't need it on this track either. Let's get an auto filter. I love doing this trick. And we're going to turn up the LFO so that it's going back and forth, back and forth. And we're going to sync it to the BPM. All right, that's the wrong track. Let's put it on this track. It's really fast. Let's turn down the rate. Turn it down and off here. All right, real quick, I'm going to take a break, listen to this a little bit, see what I want to add, and probably come back. And it's going to refresh my mind on how I want to move forward. All right, so I'm back. Not much has changed since last time, except what I'm wearing because it's another day. I just came back um, from last time, and I just added, like, a few things. Like, I added this crash right here for the intro. There's no intro yet, but eventually we're going to start working on that. But right now, we just have this basic drop. And what I want to do is add some more uh, sounds to this. So I want to try something. I want to try to have like that kind of upwards bending siren that you hear in a lot of these types of songs. Um, you guys are going to see what I mean in a second. 
I'm gonna get an operator real quick. Actually, I can't use the operator for this. Wait, let me think about this. Can I? Oh no, yeah, I can. I can. I can turn up the pitch bend range. Let's just put it to two right now. Let's make a sound with this. So let's go ahead and turn up this. Let me hide my face real quick. Let's turn up this second oscillator. So we get a more um, textured sound. All right, let's just play something. Now what I want to go ahead and do is take this down an octave by hitting shift in the down arrow. Um, now real quick, what we're going to do is since we turned up the pitch bend right here, I mean we turned it to 2, you can turn this to any number but I'm going to try 2. Let's hit this arrow right here and let's automate this. Let's try making this an octave higher. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in the drop right here. Let's EQ some of this low. This low end. Right here at the end, I want to try something different. Let's turn, let's go back to this automation and let's get rid of this pitch bend. And real quick, let's freeze all of this. Freeze the track. And then we're going to do, um, let's see what, okay, we have the filter on there. Let's undo that. Let's cut the filter with Control X. Now let's freeze it and now let's flatten the track. And now we'll paste the, the uh, EQ back. So essentially we just converted this to audio. All right, so I just wanted to make sure I'm recording and everything was all right. So I had to cut forward there for a second. But real quick, at the end here, I wanted to um, pitch downwards. So we're gonna hit this arrow now, and now that it's in audio, we can uh, transpose it. This is exactly like pitch bending, except I turned it to audio so that I can uh, get out of the MIDI, um, the MIDI note format, and go ahead and have this pitch downwards super low. So that sounds really nice. One more thing that we're gonna add. I'm kind of doing some stuff that um, you would hear in like, if you heard the song Do Not Disturb, it sounds like that. Uh, let me get a string sound. And you can use some contact libraries, but I have, uh, what are they called? I have a Ableton pack that has orchestral sounds. So hopefully I can use those and then it'll sound like what I'm trying to go for. But we're going to get this uh, cello sound, I guess. It's basically like a violin, but a little bit different. And it's very plucky because I chose the pizzicato. Pizzicato. It's a style of playing it, of playing a, a string sound. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these chords and let's... 
let's do something that's new in Ableton 10. First of all, we're going to create a clip and then we're going to select both this clip and the clip below. We're going to hit this um, MIDI note view again. And now we can kind of alternate between our two instruments and we have the ghost notes in the background so we can tell what's going on. when you start clicking on the other um, on the ghost notes it'll go back to the other sound that is being edited so you want to kind of work around that by pressing B and you get into the draw mode or you can click on this icon right here if it's lit up that means that you're using the draw mode and for that you want to mess around with the grid if you hit control 2 the grid gets larger and you can draw larger notes. If you hit control one, it gets smaller. I can keep getting smaller or keep going larger if I want to. Just look at the grid lines. <clears throat> but I'm not gonna use draw mode. Let's do something like that. Alright, hopefully this sounds alright. Now, okay, with this sound, it sounds a little bit like it needs some mixing. All right, let's go back to the cello. <laughs> My throat is still messed up, man. It's so sick. I'm so sick, I mean. Fuck. So this sound, what I was saying is that it needs to be mixed a little bit better because when it transitioned from like a low pitch to a high pitch, it sounded a little bit weird. Um, but we can do some cool stuff now. I had to mute my mic there. My nose was being annoying. It was being runny and shit. Um, we're going to call this pitch bend. Now, this beat is like super packed right now. So we're going to have to do some other creative stuff um, with the rhythm now. We're going to stop adding instruments. Um, but let me let me mix this sound right here though um, and we're going to go ahead and then move on to like kind of finishing this beat off what I want to try is putting a OTT on here this is like an interesting kind of uh, like compressor preset it's a multi-band compressor. And let me turn down the release right here. Just wanted to make sure my face cam was hidden there. Okay, let's turn this to audio now. I'm gonna freeze the track. Sometimes working with audio is a lot more like creatively freeing, if that's a word. It, it kind of liberates you. You can do some more kind of crazy stuff that you couldn't do if it was just a MIDI track. So what I'm gonna do is get a filter on here and kind of go to automation mode right here and pitch this up or not pitch it up just open the filter and 
right here, let's get out of automation mode. Let's pitch this up an octave. And instead of doing beats mode, actually we can keep beats mode, but let's put it into one shot mode right here, which means it's gonna play once and it's gonna stop. Because when you pitch audio, it gets shorter when you pitch it up. Like, when you speed up a video and the video gets faster, the audio gets faster too. And that's because it's trying to fit the audio into less space. So the same thing happens when you pitch something up. The audio will go ahead and get shorter at the same time. So we want to go ahead and, instead of having it try to make up for the short time by playing it back and forth, we want it to just play once and then stop. So it gets all choppy, but that's that's fine for this sound. We can go ahead and turn down this envelope here. Let's go back to automation. Forgot to turn up the filter right here. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit less. And right here, remember how we um, went ahead and turned it into one shot mode right here for this uh, higher pitched one. Let's just go ahead and do the same thing for the lower pitched ones. And we're gonna turn the envelope down to 70 so it gets cut short a little bit. Sounds good when everything kinda is the same length. Let's insert a return track. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start adding like beat stops and stutter effects and all that. I like to finish things off with that. Let's just call this stutter. And we're going to add a utility because it has a mute button on there. And whatever we want to have a stutter effect on, we're going to send it to that return. So right here, and then send the chords there. Let's see what else. Of course, we want the sample to go there. Let's try this sample as well. Um, I guess we'll go with the 808. And usually I'll leave the drums out of the stutter and I'll... I'll keep the pluck out as well because it's kind of like a drum. It it works kind of like a drum sound. It has like a rhythmic tone, not a tone, a rhythmic feeling to it, and it kind of guides the rhythm of the song. And the pitch bend we're gonna send as well. Now all of these things that have been sent to this stutter thing with this slider right here, we're gonna select all of them. And I think that's it. These four. Okay, let's send this one as well. I'm going to select that. And we're going to click this drop down and do sends only. So instead of playing both out of the track and the send right here, it's only going to play out of the return. Now we can start working on some stutters. So let me think about this. All right. Let's get to automation mode. I'm thinking something like this. And to get rid of those clicks, we're just going to automate the volume. There's a uh, there, I can't speak today. I just woke up. There's a volume control right here that we can automate. So everywhere, everywhere we hear that little click, we're just going to draw some automation. There we go. We, we just turned down the volume everywhere where there's a click. And that's why I don't I don't mute the drums like I don't send them to the stutter because they kind of work on their own like if I play all these drums by themselves or by themselves and I group them and I hit solo they sound good by themselves so we just want to mute the bass and the instruments and whatnot 
Let's see, where else do we want to mute? And sometimes I like to just cut out the drums like towards the end of like a, a loop and it makes a nice transition. As you can tell, it just fades out, the drums stop and it leads into the next part. Instead of having the hi-hats just keep going crazy, keep going crazy and then stop all of a sudden, we just take it out a little bit earlier. Let's take this up an octave. So I think that's good. So what I did is I just took it down an octave and I turned it to complex pro mode and we can mess around with the format. The format is like the tone of your voice or the tone of a sound. Like some people have a very high format. Other people have like a low format and it kind of changes the tone of your voice. It's like, if you say the sound Y, it's like Y kind of changes the tone of your sound, even if you're singing the same pitch. So some people have like a low formant and some people have a high formant, but it's still the same note. You see what I'm saying? Very basic sound. Let's see what happens if we take this down. I like that, that's cool. And I like Complex Pro because you do get those formant controls and whatnot. The envelope does something. It's not very clear to me what is going on with what the envelope really means, but it changes the sound as well. I guess it's like, it controls how fast the format is being applied or whatever. I don't know. It's an envelope, so it does something about like changing the shape of the of the envelope for the format or whatever. I don't know. That's better. It sounds way more dirty and gritty when it's lower. like this pluck though it sounds way too like metallic and stuff so I might do some mixing and like change this off camera and definitely check out some of these packs that I was using if you like these sounds um, leave a comment let me know what other artists you guys want to see and yeah just leave comments about things that stood out to you uh, if you want to flame me go ahead uh, if you want to dislike the video and hate go ahead I'm gonna do some off camera work, probably mix this song, add like an intro, and I'll show you guys what it would sound like as a finished beat.